for seduction in the world at all. Uh, and particularly... Can we stop for a moment here? Nick just showed me a picture of his dog who... <laughs> cute, cute dog, right? But the question is, who cares? You know what I mean, right? He is... We're in the middle of a podcast. He's taking pictures of his dog who... I'm sure he has a thousand, you know. And now he's showing Pat. It's a pretty cute picture. He's got yes. his tongue out. You guys see it. Right? Who could care less? It's unbelievable. We're trying to record a show. He's taking pictures of this dog. Who gives a shit? I don't necessarily care that people are wearing masks. Mm. I don't understand it, you know. It's like, I don't care that people are, uh, they speak in tongues, you know, but I don't understand it. You don't understand people talking in, through the paper mass that protects us from a deadly virus. Well, I just don't understand one allowing one's imagination to run rampant, taking mm -hmm. complete and total control of their lives. I mean, the war is over, you know, mm -hmm. the war is completely over. You know, the world if it ever existed at all. The <laughs> hey, easy, Alex Jones. The war, like the the world, is as dirty as it ever was. You just had a rough year where y we were really afraid of germs, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, but everything's the same, mm -hmm. you know. It's all it's all the same. Can I tell you something? And I, this will not get political. Lick doorknobs if you have to. You know, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. Yeah, but now that fucking media is all excited about uh, shaking people up with this uh, variant coming around oh yeah it's gonna come and get you have you not heard no, of the I new strain I, of uh the novel coronavirus this no, is delta covid 19 they got a nice name for it oh really mm -hmm. really scary wow. name it's really trying to attack especially the people of california just for some reason i don't know i guess our vax numbers aren't high enough yeah they but. use uh like military an acronym language to really spook people out hmm. delta Right. And it really s Delta is obviously the mathematical symbol for change. So it really hits it home. This is a different COVID-19. Got it. Can got I it. tell you something again? This will I, not turn political. Yeah. And, and I, I before you say that, you guys both know I was as spooked as Corona about coronavirus as anybody. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I was terrified of it, petrified. He forced me to stay home from a recording. One yes. Time. For, I had two to zoom in. for two mm -hmm. weeks. I was like, no, no, no. What are you nuts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now. The science is on our side. Mm -hmm. The war is over. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, this is where, uh, and I've interacted with city officials, local officials. When I owned that damn tour company, I was the tour czar. I had to uh, deal with Eric Garcetti. I deal with uh, Mitch O'Farrell. Uh, you know, people on the ground level, because at that time, uh, our, our beloved mayor was the attorney general of the state. Sure. So anyway, I realized they were morons very early on. Sure, sure. I, I didn't know that before. They're really stupid. Sure. They don't know anything. Um, <laughs> right. So- when you're talking about a bunch of people that are pitted against each other, mainly because they don't know, right? I came up with a system just with this whole mass issue. Yeah. Why not create a website where you can print wristbands that are color coded that let you know where you stand? You can say, so when you're walking by, when I see someone in the park or uh, uh, in the car next to me with the window rolled down wearing a mask, yeah. if I saw a wristband that was purple and I knew that purple meant, Hey, I, I've had pneumonia three times. This thing still terrifies me, but I don't judge you, right? All these things could be color-coded things to let us all know where the other person's this head's guy, at. This guy wants to live in some His fascist man Orwellian nightmare. Mandated, public, documented yeah. uh, medical record. Well, yeah. no, letting you know where hey, the Adolf, it's, no, it's, take a breath. It's huh? where you stand with it. It could be like, I still think this thing is, is uh, deadly, and that's why I'm wearing a mask. Listen, like I said, I don't, I don't necessarily care care it doesn't make me angry but i i'm just confused about it you mm -hmm. know why would you be confused what is it because of the messaging from our beloved government well the, the messaging from our government is very clear you can take them off <laughs> it's very clear people are still wearing them that's what's so confusing i'm sorry pat i have to apologize i initially scoffed at yours because i i I felt like it was like the government encroaching. But I like what you're saying. This isn't necessarily whether you've been vaccinated or not. It's your opinion on it. I would have a brown one because I don't give a shit. Oh, look at <laughs> and that. Then, look and, that. I, and then I would be able to go find other people who are sane and have proper uh, understanding of risk aversion. Right. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Well, I was used as a pawn in one of these contentious arguments the other day. Oh. I, uh, I went to go get my hair chopped off. I asked for an eight. Evidently, that is a clipper length that doesn't exist. Uh, but the uh, the barber did not tell me, so she just took uh, scissors to my head. 
did a magnificent job. All your hair is gone. It wasn't a buzz cut, though. I asked for a buzz cut. So after she was done, it took about half an hour. It was a lovely conversation with uh, with her. She's very into horror movies, and uh, her favorite horror movie is Constantine, which is pretty... Uh, She's a big fan of Keanu Reeves. Pretty telling. Um, but I asked her after the, the haircut to then take a clipper to it and shave it all off, which was a very awkward moment she was 15 minutes late to her next appointment but i didn't care i was very clear up front i want a bus cut um but we got to talking about masks it was the first time i could take a mask off during a cut and we were both talking about how you know if you're vaxxed why not why don't you take it off and we were speaking pretty loudly about it and the person who was cutting hair next to her uh left in kind of a huff left yeah she left the uh she left the barbershop. Mm -hmm. One of my actually favorite <laughs> secret pastimes is watching employees fight. Uh, you can just interject. Your, it's kind of like reality TV. You interject right. yourself in these people's lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For just a little bit and watch some drama. Well, unbeknownst to me, as I said, I was using this pawn in their argument. <laughs> that, le that plane is uh, spying on us. It's very, very loud. I want to see if we're wearing masks. Can't believe if you if you can't hear it. It's just unbelievable to me. It's so some fucking people loud. Can hear it. But anyways. Uh, the, the barber leaves, the hairdresser leaves, and she says, I mean, that is a nuclear plate. Uh, like, it's going to drop a They're taking pictures from the bomb. air. They want to see how many people are wearing masks. So the barber leaves in a huff, and um, we're talking about the mask thing, and the girl cutting my hair goes, like her. I mean, she wears a mask all the time. She's freaked out about it. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, I didn't uh, spoke pretty loudly about that. I wonder if she heard. She said, I hope she did. <laughs> and I was thinking, I didn't consent to <laughs> to be used as a weapon of your aggression. Uh, if you're it's able ridiculous. to if you're able to, can we backtrack to the beginning of the conversation? Did she did she did she leave a, a, as a result of something that you had said? Uh, or did did the person cutting your hair? Did she lead the conversation literally because of it? Or was it a happy accident for her? You know, I can't remember. It's the pot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. all it's just memories swarming. But I'm wondering when we're going to be able to uh, take the masks off during planes, because especially that flight home from Vegas. Mm. I mean, I was going to throw up mask or no mask. Now, I'm wondering if I went a little too far, because on a, a previous episode, I noted that it, for basically the entire month of June and a little bit of May, I, it was the met uh, Mercury retrograde. And I was uh, pretty uh, filled with angst. Right. So some of that uh, issues I had with the airline um uh, which was because of the planetary makeup. Possibly, although she was yelling around like uh, uh, like uh, Aunt Lydia uh, t ordering people to put their masks up. Yeah, no, she was a tyrant and a cunt. I don't think the, the planetary makeup of the universe had anything to do with Fair it. Fair enough. But, um, I developed a, just a, a fail-safe against wearing your mask on a plane. Eat, cheese it slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like that would work. It did. But so I'm... Uh, I'm listening to stuff today and i guess american airlines is canceling 150 flights a day did you hear about this yeah why do we give why do we give them money the airlines or why do we give people? We're, we're living in a capitalist uh utopia right the united states of america if it's a you know based on merit why would we ever give them money why would we ever give them money? The it's a bank, fucking unions, Dylan. The banks, I understand, because Obama's daughters would have been, you know, they would have gotten into an accident if he didn't bail them out. But the airlines? Let air, let American airlines burn to the fucking ground. Well, Dylan, Jesus Christ. if you're going to tell an entire industry they can't do business as usual for six months, if you want them to be able to, you know, pay their bills and be there when we're ready to allow people to stop wearing masks and go on planes to Vegas. But they're not. That's the, that's the gag, mm. right? They're flat. They're canceling a hundred. First of all, the people that work on those planes are, they're high on something. I mean, they're power drunk. They're evil people. So, Oh, Oh, don't I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're instruments of tyranny. Don't get me started on the myth of the attractive, friendly stewardess that I grew don't up call watching. Them that Where anymore. are they? I forgot. Only on sea they, they can they? be stews. But man, that's all. Like 
if you, you, I always like imagine like flirting with them, and I could finally afford to fly. I didn't fly until right. I was nineteen years old. Right, right, right. And then I get on there, and they're elderly, angry women, or or big, or, big gay guys, big gay yeah, guys. Yeah. Yes, who mm-hmm. are actually pretty friendly. Yeah, and funny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I prefer the big gay guys. Oh, oh me too. No, no a thousand doubt. percent. A uh, thousand percent. Uh, if I don't. If I hope I'm not interrupting a, a story or a thought of yours. I was just going to say I had a memory of a wonderful gay uh, airline waiter or whatever yeah, yeah, the hell yeah. they want to be called. The waiters, I think. I could tell you had a liking for me because it, this had never happened to me. I'm with uh, Jay Miller, and we're flying to New York to meet our boss. And it's like a five-hour flight. This fucking guy, every time he walked by, he filled my glass with red wine. And they'd give me the eyes. I played with him a little bit. Uh, okay. It was a wonderful flight. Yeah. That's, Did you? No. I had to be asked. It had to be asked. Yeah. Um. I, I just... I don't I don't want it to to get political, but, you know, like they're they're canceling all of the flights because they don't have enough staff. And to why operate do you think they don't them. have enough staff, Dylan? Because they fired all of them. No, this- it's because they they're all unions and they took a bunch of free fucking money from the government and they can make as much money sitting their fucking asses at home until their union orders them back to work. That's oh, well, these is. are these are two different narratives because, you know, you have. A- oh, I'm just <laughs> stating the one that is actually factual. <laughs> Not the anger towards the corporations that ruined everything. No, these are assholes that say, as long as I'm getting a free check, I'm going to say with my union leader, we don't feel safe yet. This is what's confusing to me. Um, By the know, way, if you work you in the airline I'm, industry, I'm please comment. I'm very anti-corporation and stuff. But if we are living in the capitalist utopia that is the United States of America, based on merit, these people have failed miserably. Mm-hmm. Why did we need to give them money, period? Oh, because they used their tax money to buy stocks for their shareholders. So that doesn't make any sense. Then they went bankrupt. And now, you know, dueling narratives here. But we say, we'll give you $4 billion and you can't do anything to your employees until September 30th. What happens on October 1st? Everyone gets fired. Now what happens? They don't have enough staff to man these flights and be mean to people for masks slipping below their nostrils. Well, and also, let's 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 talk honestly here. The fucking Before government. you continue, is there any merit to what I just said? Well, I think there's some truth I- into it. I think right. your ire is uh, in right. one direction where it should be divided like a pie chart towards several different entities. Cool. And it uh, shouldn't be at capitalism because what you're witnessing is not capitalism. It's government intervention that stopped these places from working. Right. So they should have burned to the ground. Yes. Yes. And then other things would, would go. They should have been allowed to operate. And people... We should have been able to choose whether or not we go on those flights. Oh, got it. Got and then it, if it. you survive, you survive. Not shut everything down. Got it. Hmm. Got it. Got but it. But I'm not going to get political. We're not trying to get political. I yeah, just, don't get political. I just want the CEO of American Airlines and the top five shareholders to be drawn and quartered in a public square. Let's say Times Square. Mm-hmm. And let's put now, it on national television. Now, Dylan, It'll be much more entertaining than The Bachelorette. I, I believe our audience is pr- probably uh, runs across the board as far as their political Spans readings. the gamut. I would say this. You're not against capitalism, for clarity's sake, because if you are, I'd like you to name another system that works better than that in the United States in in the last 300 years. Communism. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm not against capitalism. I'm against... uh, Corporate greed. Cronyism masquerading as capitalism. I am, too. We all are. Yeah, we all are. Yeah, we all are. Mm -hmm. So this is another podcast show. Sorry about all that. We will rise as the proletariat. (laughs) Um, I let's yeah seriously let's chop some heads off French Revolution let's do it. Uh, this no, is, you don't chop heads off. You go and you work hard tomorrow and, and you try to vote. build a better life for yourself and, and you your family. Vote. That's how you do it. And you, um, and you and you set a good example for Ellie. So one day she's strong enough and powerful enough to, to change be the, the next Kamala Harris in the inside. Yes. Uh, I am Dylan. Mm-hmm. I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis. What's going on, everybody? Pat, producer of the podcast, so they're behind my glass. How are you? I'm good. Now, before you start putting us in some kind of direction, uh, I know you're trying to pull the strings here. I must know, how was dinner with the girlfriend and the wives last night (laughs) (laughs) that I didn't get invited to at Cha 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 on 3rd Street in Los Angeles? I do not want to rub it in, but it was one of my favorite nights out ever. I don't know if it was- It was a beautiful night last night. I don't know if it was the finally enjoying the freedom to sit there comfortably without any social distancing, no mask, the the rooftop atmosphere of this Mexican place, the wonderful bar program that uh, we were all delighted by, our our various choices. But again, not trying to rub it. No, I understand. I, but it's not between us. Now, yeah, okay. now it's between my wife and the two uh, first ladies yeah. in your lives. I wonder what got Cherie so fired up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Could well, it have been? 
you? <laughs> well, she feels left out. Oh, she feels okay. like she's close uh, kind of to Jules, and then she really likes Cece a lot. Right, and for right, her right. not to get the invite, uh, it was like a personal dig. That's her. what happens when you create a human being that can't wipe their own ass. Well, we've been paying. We got a nanny. I'm kidding. Well, I don't know why we have to, again, another uh, nuclear. Don't, uh, no, keep your thought going there. Uh, I, Try well, and dig yourself out of this one, Dylan. I don't have to dig myself out of anything. What I have to do is walk across the top of what you perceive to be a ditch. <laughs> now, I, I want to say this. How much time was spent talking about me at dinner? I must know. Because uh, I would definitely, if one of you guys was missing, only one of you was there, I'd definitely be doing a little talking about the other Next person. to none. We talked about the show and the funny quips we have on our show. Mm. During dinner. But then we went back for like a nightcap at his place, saw his place for the first time. And there we kind of talked about the fight. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really funny. We, uh, Me and Cease watched the fight. And uh, I was laughing. Oh, you put ass. the fight up? No, just, no, on, just a on a phone. phone. Oh, okay. Um, if you want to watch it, eh? <laughs> It's on our YouTube channel, Unlisted. And uh, <laughs> yeah, for those. Just so you can share the link. For those who don't know. Uh, it was one of the scariest moments of my life watching it back. Really? Nick Neither one of us acted commendably. Nick and Pat. But who started it? Yeah. Okay, what are we doing? I came in uh, hot and you escalated. You fair know. enough. So <laughs> these two fought one another. So we were watching the video and uh, me and Cece are obviously laughing our ass off because it's hilarious to watch two grown, grown men, men fight <laughs> with one another over a reality television show. Oh, you should see my fight with that well known podcast the other night. That was really low. Yeah, you could just say it. <laughs> I'd rather not. I love just saying it and then bleeping it later. As, uh, as long as we remember. Right. But <laughs> Why are you being so Samantha right now? What are you talking about? Why are you being so Samantha? Well, I think it's entertaining for the audience to understand our dynamic. I think so too. And I, I, I do want to say. Fight night was withstanding. Like, I didn't even know about this. Like, they planned it together. Dylan called my girlfriend. Mm. Uh, Jules was like, "Oh, Dylan called me," and I, I kind of got worried. I was like, "What did I do?" Oh. <laughs> but no. They, instead, they planned a dinner because she knows Dylan's a foodie. She's been wanting to go to this place. Yeah, but why not throw an invitation out there to me? Too? And we're near neighbors. All right, I'll, hang on. I'll Can say I this. please speak no, just I'll, really I'll, quickly? That the story he just told is wildly incorrect. I was picked up one evening by Jules to go home as we are now neighbors. We live in Silver Lake. Um, it's cool. Black Lives Matter. Black I Lives Matter. Nowhere near done. Hmm. Jules says that she has a reservation to Cha Cha Cha. And that it took her a month to get in. Now, me being a culinary wizard, I'd never heard of this. I said, wow, I... What is this restaurant that takes so long to get into? <laughs> I must go. She, I said, I, I, you know, in my mind, I say, I'm, I must go to this place. And she says, we happen to have two extra seats. I made the reservation for four. Oh. Would you like to go? And I said, of course. Yeah. Book us. That's the type us. of uh, thoughtfulness that Jules, like you just. I understand. Exactly. I like Jules a lot. Now, I called Jules because that same evening we were talking about a French restaurant named Oriel Chinatown that she recommended Cecilia and I go to. Incredibly confusing name. For a date night. Uh, now, I felt as though Jules misled me. Uh, it was no French cuisine mecca of any sorts. Uh, the timing of the dishes uh, hitting our table was completely fucking off. Uh, the pate tasted like it came from Gelson's. Decent, but not really anything <laughs> rustic, you know. Uh, and the wine list was old world with nothing natural whatsoever. Um, so, there was no plan hatched to exclude your old ass from dinner. Mm. It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing where I mm. snagged onto a reservation. What is wrong I'm with confused, you? I'm confused though actually. You missed like how did it how did that evolve into Oh, me calling her because I forgot the name of the restaurant and I hate texting. So I called her on my way to train Muay Thai and I I asked, "What's the name of that place again? I want to go with Cece this Friday." She told me we said nothing of cha 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 other than I'm so excited Pat's not coming. <laughs> By the way, you know why I'm not going to trade Muay Thai with you, correct? No, I don't know. Because of the I don't, I don't care. Because of the bad terms Donnie's sister and I ended on, and she told oh, him. Oh, right, right. That would be wise for you to not go, because, yeah, sparring with Don Abedian may get a little hairy, because he's a, a killer. I'll take my ass whooping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. 
He wouldn't do it. He's he's a gentle giant. I know. He probably he, he probably does. I mean, he probably has. He's an instrument of death. He knows the responsibility he has. He's not going to get into petty fights like that. And I, this is the free show. I'm not going to get into details, but I mean, we were all adults in this situation. I sure, really sure, didn't, yeah, of I course, really of course. Uh, I, so right. what, what? I feel like we've covered it. I, I I'm over. Oh it. no, I think that there's a lot more <laughs> bubbling up in your paranoid <laughs> rat brain right now. Well, that's how it works with me. I'm Irish. I Could don't we? Forget. I hold a grudge. What is wrong with you? I think this would be fun, and we've done this a lot, and never followed follow through. But it's like content now. Let's plan a date and a place and go all six of us. I want to go to the Yakitori place. I've said that. Where is it? Downtown Los Angeles. You have to wade through zombies to get there. I'm down there quite often. Are you really? Mm Mm-hmm. Let's you seem somber and disappointed right now. No, I'm not somber. I, I just I didn't think that dinner was going to look. We've talked about it too much. The audience is way over it. Oh, I think so, too. I think so, too. So. Uh, but I wanted I wanted I want to go to that. The only time I couldn't is the weekend of July 12th at the moment. Hmm. Uh, Connor okay. Dustin. Great. That's right. So, um, uh, hey, do you want to do a fight night for Con- uh, Connor and Dustin? Sure. Why not? Hey, Nick, you want to come? No, he's out of town. I'll Perfect. sell my tickets. Double what they're worth. <laughs> okay. You Come on. Not. <laughs> All right. So uh, we got some stuff to get into this evening. Yes. Uh, we've already been going for 20 minutes, so not too much stuff. But we have a long-awaited clip that I've been really wanting to get to. And, um, and I want to say thank you. I got the numbers on this show. This is kind of our newest property, which right. is kind of what we'd really like to do is not have to watch some horrible reality show and make hay out of it. Right. I'd rather just come in here and be a lazy bastard and shoot the yes. Right. It's a lot less. You don't have less. to say yes. You can curse. No, well, people don't like that word. Okay. Um, so I anyway, I uh, <laughs> I'm happy that you guys have if any new listeners from Tim Dillon or wherever. Yes. Thank you for listening. We yes. appreciate it. Please share it with your friends. Yep. I think it's mostly the same people we've been talking to for four years. But any new avenue, people, but thank you. we love you. And uh, guys, help us out. Five stars in the reviews. It helps the podcast look more legit. Also, patreon.com slash another podcast network. Dick Cavett faces down with Hugh Hefner and feminists. Yes, and a psychologist for some reason. Okay, so let me set this up. Uh, as the, if you're a fan of the show, you know that I hate late night TV. I think Jimmy uh, Kimmel is a nice guy. I think Jimmy Fallon's probably a nice guy, but they make he's a oh, drunk. They make horrible, unwatchable late night TV. Right. You have come to hate it. The, uh, I've come to hate it. I'm sorry. Thank you for that. Thank you. You've come. I've come. To, I used to love it back in its heyday. Dave he Letterman 20 years ago. I thought you were beating off. Oh, I used to, there's nothing better than back in the day have a little buzz on or have some uh, bowl of cereal. It's 11:30 at night. Yeah. No one's bugging you. Right. And you got some Letterman on. He's going to crack you up. Yeah. Right? That that sounds like you know, we were talking about capitalistic uh, utopias earlier. And again, I apologize for bringing any of that up, but that <laughs> that picture you just painted, you by yourself in your apartment, single man, eating Lucky Charms at 11.30 at night out of a styrofoam bowl watching Letterman. Pure bliss. It's so funny mm-hmm. because I can also remember, I love Letterman, but I was, I'm was i much, much, much younger than Pat. So I was watching <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I had to do the couple right. matches. But, yeah. I, but I was watching it at home with my grandmother as she just watched the local news and nodded off. And, and the, the next TV thing that comes on is De- David Letterman, and I enjoy it. And then she's like, oh, let's turn this guy off. I'm like, no, it's, he's got uh, your honey coming up. That's what she would call an actor she liked. It'd uh-huh. be like Denzel or... Or whomever. Uh, my your grandma gr- likes black guys. Your grandma's into black guys. Uh, she 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 doesn't see color with her honey. Yeah, me and mm-hmm. me and your grandma have a lot in common. You love Denzel or just black guys, or you don't see color. I uh, know. Or we, you're seven, 84. 84. Go ahead. Oh, all right. Uh, so anyway, uh, back to late night. So uh, there's zero substance going on in the late night department. I do like watch what happens live with Andy Cohen because he sure. at least has a little fun and the guests kind of a little bit more Loose. open to, yeah, a little, it's a looser format. They're drinking, but late night TV has really missed an opportunity uh, and to take chances and to actually be interesting to adults these days. Right. Uh, uh, people having real talks. Uh, that's why podcasts have kind of blown up. I think is because people want to hear people. They actually to ba- basically people talk. Real. Right, right, right. And and I don't want to derail you, but that's why, like, and I think someone's going to do this. There's a couple options out there, but podcasts, especially with the added video, there's people who are creating a late night format in podcast form and getting really, really big. Unfortunately, the biggest one is like Charlie DeMello or something. Uh, oh, so, my God. But she's God. created a late night show on YouTube that's more produced than anything F- Fallon does. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, my God. And, and there's going to be someone very talented who will – take that mantle it's and it could be us we're, we're evolving into it 
Well, I'd say late night television is the one television format that has actually taken a step back from 30 years ago. Do you think it's because uh, General Electric assumes that the adults that are watching are actually children? Because they can't handle this kind of well, content. Well, the problem is, is when you're trying to grab a huge audience like that, you're always worried about who you're going to offend. Because when you offend someone, then they start writing, uh, you know, writing bad things about you on Twitter, right, and they right, get the right. advertisers all shaken up. So everybody just plays it right down the middle, and that means boring TV. Sure. Like I know Fallon thinks it's really fun to play beer pong with Scarlett Johansson, but I really don't give a fuck. Right, right, right. I think that's lame, actually. Yeah. yeah. I think he's bad at it, but there's something about that's why Hot Ones became popular. Like something about this, this mundane task that that brings their walls down and lets them be more real i just don't like him he's too coked up and he laughs too much well here's the weird thing about late night too if you think about like any a million shows on any streaming service think of all the different worlds all those tv shows are exploring all the like they're not worried about offending anybody i mean i watched a show called i may destroy you i thought it was a guy we, we talked about oh, that at oh, dinner last that night. That sounds oh, pretty did you really? offensive, actually, what you just said. Well, I, I don't know. I saw her in the trailer. She takes off the wig, and she's bald or something. I was like, yeah, is this? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know who, what anybody is anymore. Anyway, we're exploring all these different, um, I don't know, w walks of life and such, and no one seems in that, in that world to be worried about offending anybody. Yet late night, it seems like they're terrified to offend anybody. Sure, yeah, and that's yeah. fucking lame. Right, because, uh, again, General Electric has to protect their slice of one million viewers a night. Yes, and it has gotten out. You know Conan uh, O'Brien, by his last couple years, a half a million people were watching that show. You know how expensive and how many people have to work on a late night show? It's like 200 people. Right. You got the audience, people coming in. You got all, uh, you got all the writers. You got the producers. 500,000 people. Yeah. I'm not going to say we're as big as that, but we, we have pretty good numbers. Right, right, right. Uh, Conan should have been worried about his job in 2016. Sure. But he's, he, I guess he was on that contract. Well, he and, just smoked pot with Seth Rogen, so he's really lightening oh, it up. Oh, okay, yeah. Now he's moving over to streaming service. Anyway, sure. so my point here is late night shows in the 70s and 80s were way more progressive. Do you think it's because uh, they were only concerned about offending white men? And white men really don't get offended by a lot of stuff because of the uh, power position they've been in for so long. Probably, but I also think it was uh, just a new technology. Like, think about television and, and like the internet now. Like, a, a television show in '68 or '70, like television only been around in most people's homes for what 20 or 30 years. So they're thinking, hey, there's some political issues. Let's talk openly about this. They weren't thinking about offending anybody. Right, right. So I have a clip tonight. Yeah. All right, and it's from the Dick Cavett Show, which was a wonderful show where people talked real. They said what they thought. They were thoughtful. They listened to each other. They yeah. were engaged. It wasn't about you know uh, people throwing hissy fits or being too uh, afraid to uh, offend uh, their sponsor or something. No, he was fucking. He was moderating debates between Vidal and Buckley. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, they don't do that anymore. Right. All right, I've gone on too long. So this clip is at the uh, for, at the. I'm sorry, this clip is from the Dick Cavett Show. I love Dick. Where he welcomed in two writers and organizers from the Women's Liberation Movement. And it just so happened Hugh Hefner was also a guest on the same couch that night. That's and they also had some kind of psychologist. And I don't know why he was on there, but he chimed in too. So um, I guess we're going to, we have Susan Brown Miller. And I forget what the other woman's name is. Forgive me, but I'll get to it. Anyway, uh, let's play just from the top of the show. This is from 1970. I would like to introduce now two ladies who I'm sure, uh, well, I know everyone is aware by this time that there are a lot of women in this country who feel that they're being pushed around and they have become very vocal. They call themselves the Women's Liberation Movement. We have two representatives oh, in that movement here tonight. You can see the cigarette smoke Both writers, already. Isn't that uh, wonderful? Susan oh, Miller had God. a piece in the Sunday Times a couple of weeks back. And uh, Sally Kempton is Sally, yeah. the other lady. And I would like you to meet those two ladies. Maybe we can find out what the women are all upset about now <laughs> uh, hilarious but I I immediately I don't want to cut us at 27 seconds in but I immediately sent something that uh, postmodernism has destroyed and that's a sense of earnesty there's no recognition there's recognition of the lenses but you know Jimmy Fallon very much feels like he's uh, doing a show he's playing you know? to the camera right uh, this is just an earnest conversation he's talking to the people in the room you know mm -hmm. not the uh, not the FUPAs and double wides that General Electric is trying to sell a new microwave to, right? Will you welcome them, please? The outfits are uh, very understated. 
That was just a loud music. Are you Sally? Yes. Yes. Well, you've brought cigarettes. Could I not light it for you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just a little joke, you see. Okay. Would you like to not light it for me? Is it true that you travel in pairs uh, for some reason, or is this just a... There, there is a political reason why we came tonight together. A political reason? Yes, yes. Oh, well, you want to leap right into that? Sure. Uh, the Women's Liberation Movement says sisterhood is powerful, mm -hmm. and that means women together. And the Women's Liberation is hot copy this season. And, you yeah, know, every we magazine get, has an article. Right, every magazine has an article. All the shows kind of want to see. I miss terms like that, flesh. hot copy. And uh, our movement doesn't want to create stars or celebrities. So when we get an offer, we feel we should come, you know, in a pair. Oh, well, stars are created in pairs. I mean... Uh, right. Dick seems to be very um, contentious straight off the Well, he wanted to light her cigarette, and she said, no, I'm not, you're not going to light my cigarette because I'm a woman. And I can do it myself. I think it started a little bit before that. And even that, Dick, why would that make you so upset? Calm down. Try and have a good. <laughs> Try and have a good time. So I have here. a couple points where I, this is a long interview. I'm going to play a couple points. So uh, there's one other, a couple other things to get out of this. Yes. And we'll, we'll but also, we're, we're, we want to be crosstalk teams. I mean, we want to, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, answer questions for each other and support each other generally. Okay. Which is what do you think men are doing wrong? Uh, they're in charge, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, <laughs> they oppress us as women. They won't let us be, and Hugh Hefner is my enemy. Oh, is Hef your enemy? Uh, yeah. We really set you up tonight, didn't we? <laughs> we've, been, we've been watching. Even in the audience. Look at Hugh Hefner. He looks like a villain in a Batman comic book right now. This is unbelievable. It's wonderful. Unbelievable. Uh, he's probably about 50 here, by the way. Okay. I, I, uh, I get a certain. Um, well, I think we have, a, uh, you know, more than a few. Um, I'm sure you must have some. Of the live people here in the well, audience. If that's true, then there are sisters. We didn't bring them. It's just that women's liberation is growing you didn't, every day. You didn't stack the oh, audience, no. if you'll pardon the expression. No, no. Uh, <laughs> what, it's a reference um, to tits. Now you two are successful. Stacked. You're Sally Kempton, are you? Right. You're, you're successful writers. Uh, have your careers been stood in the way of by your sex? Uh, well, Susan should really answer that question because mine hasn't for various reasons. Um, except she psychologically, fucked people to get another issue. ahead. Yeah, good you came yeah. in Tuesday. Right. That's what she said. Right. Really? I feel uh, like it. I have. I never wrote anything till I was 28. That's why years I said old. yikes. There was nothing concrete and about it. I never it. dared to allow myself to believe that I had ambition and that I should be a writer. I worked at Esquire magazine for two years as a researcher. I worked at Newsweek magazine for two years as a researcher, and I'd go in periodically to my bosses and say, "I'd like to do more. I'd like to write." And they'd say, oh, you got your hair set today. Isn't that lovely? You know, things like that. And they never took my ambition seriously. When I was 28, I read Betty Friedan's book, The Feminine Mystique, and I saw myself on every page. And I knew what she was talking about. All now, right, she's going to go at it with Hefner in about a second. Okay, I, I do want to say Dick Cavett is being a complete fucking bitch right now. I How mean, so? He, he's just very, very snide. He's making little jabs here and there. This wasn't, I, you know... I guess this was a time when men in power were still very much fighting, trying to stamp this out before uh, it got going. Much like my hair, it's starting to thin, <laughs> and the barber said you got to take care of it now before. It I'm goes. only giving. I'm not saying that what he's doing is right. I, I just want to give you a time reference just so people yes. understand how old this late night show was. Right, this right, is right. Fifty years ago. Yes. Fifty. Fifty years ago. That's that, that's a long time. Right. All right. Uh, I want to see if she goes at it with half, half uh, if All not, right, in the next see. minute, we'll move on. And I knew that I really wanted to do something, and for me it was writing, so I started to do it. Um, you know, I'm sorry. I had some you know small what? Move it to um, I'm 350. I'm Don't feel rushed. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, she's a regular old friend, Leibowitz. I actually kind of like Cavett's going to ask him if you could make uh, wave a magic wand to fix this. Yeah, see, uh, th that kind of questioning is so annoying. He's asking these very broad questions to set them up for well, it's rambling. A unique answer. It's very, very, very annoying from uh, Dick, and I love Dick. Education, really. Um, women are brought up in really hundreds of ways. I mean, from the time they're, they're uh, two and three years old, uh, to be cute and coquettish and intellectually unserious, uh, to seduce people instead of uh, saying... Can you pause it for want. a second? Mm -hmm. um, Boy... I, I looked her up. She's still alive. I bet she's pissed at Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the work that these two ladies did over 50 years. Sure. And it's been distilled down to coquettishness. 
a bunch of chicks uh, wagging their fucking asses and well, showing their well, tits to sell tummy tea. Here are the uh, here. Not the, all women. The I'm just saying. The problem with, uh, you know, all of these very grandiose philosophical movements, although there was a lot of practicality in this movement. A lot of people don't want to be an intellectual. Mm -hmm. uh, they may profess to be, but uh, they really want to just thin down a little bit so they can show their tits and sell tummy tea. It's a much easier way of living than to exercise your brain you know do you know how hard it is to write an op-ed right yeah do research it's a lot that goes into it you yeah. have to form sentences uh may we continue yeah um i think it would be what we would really like is is for there to be no necessity for seduction in the world at all uh and particularly can we stop for a moment here nick just showed me a picture of his dog who <laughs> cute cute dog right but the question is, who cares? You know what I mean? Right? He is, we're in the middle of a podcast. He's taking pictures of his dog, who I'm sure he has a thousand, you know. And now he's showing Pat. It's a pretty cute picture. He's got it's, his tongue out. You who, guys see it. Who could care less? It's unbelievable. We're trying to record a show. He's taking pictures of this dog. Who gives a shit? <laughs> for there to be no necessity for women to seduce men to get what they want. Well, now, there's some of you, and I find it hard to not say some of you, because there are different voices speaking for the women's liberation movement uh, who reject men altogether. It's almost they like they're not a uh, monolith. in the same room with a man if they can avoid it. Uh, are you two of those ladies? Uh, and if so, what are we doing here? I, th I think we're probably more optimistic about the ability of men to change. We think there's going to be a struggle, and we don't think that men are going to give up their power and privilege easily, because yeah. they benefit from oppressing Hef's women. tugging really away on that pipe Hefner over there. built an empire he looks like based Popeye. on oppressing women. Um, there we go. Uh, you know, the day... One lady uh, that we spoke to who's a member of your movement would not come on cut. tonight with, uh, with you, uh, Mr. Hefner, because <coughs> she said it would be like putting Stokely Carmichael on with George Wallace. Um, I don't know which of you is flattered by that, but... Uh, feels like Wallace, eh? That's I don't know which of you is which, but uh, have you had this reaction before uh, tonight? Yes, I think Playboy's been singled out along with, um, you know, the Miss America contest uh, and some other things as, um, you know, as the extreme example of what the, the new feminists feel is the wrong image for women. Uh, but, you know, having been described as an oppressor, can I respond just a little bit? All right. Uh, Fair question. I, I'm more in sympathy than perhaps, uh, you know, the girls realize with... Women. Women. I'm sorry. Yes, women. I'm 35. ...than the ladies realize. Why I does that use matter? girls referring to women of all ages. You should stop. Uh, uh, you want to uh, be called a boy. Uh, like uh, oh, I see. Okay. You're not a woman. Uh, you don't understand. <laughs> never, I'd always felt it was, I always felt it was complimentary, but... Uh, Never thought you'd have your mouth washed yeah, out for saying very, girls. That's no, that's right. That's I, I, I'd never thought of girl as being, but I think there's, well, yeah. I think there's validity I mean, to it. I think there's validity. I'd never thought of it as being, you know, condescending. Uh, that's because your magazine has right, an wait, image let, of women at, at an arrested development. Well, let me, <laughs> let, let me respond. Let me respond for just a moment, and then we'll May I really say get that the ladies in your magazine your have the opposite of. These women chose to be in the magazine. I, I love Susan. Yeah, I know you do. It's love insane. Susan. Love Susan. Let me tell you, uh, if you want, the two ladies that we, I'm sorry, the women that we're uh, showcasing here. Yeah, I think ladies is okay. Uh, all right, so Hef's dead. He rolled sevens a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to some ladies is not okay. So Susan Why are you Brown, getting so angry right now? Because you're like, oh, girls, it shouldn't be. Like, usually when it's someone younger than you, that's what, like, I'll call a 25-year-old guy a kid. I'm like, this kid doesn't, like, there's no malintent there. And she's trying to say it's the patriarchy trying to keep their place. And you agree with it. Right. Well, here's the thing. I'm kind of like when my son pronounces my name wrong or calls me Roger. I don't say anything. Do you think I if, don't care. if Chet Hanks walked up to a black guy and said the N-word, but he had no malice, he was just trying to be one of the boys? Perfectly apt analogy. Well, continue, Pat. Oh, I was going to. Uh, hang on a second. I love the condescension in your voice right now. Like. Because that was a not a good analogy. What if you? That's why I was so kind of. What? Saying. What? If I want to hear what Pat has to say. I don't want to get into a real discussion about it. So your modus operandi is to belittle and condescend, and then say, "No, no, no! I don't want to hear anything else. Let's just keep going." Yeah, I'm like Dick Cavett. Right, right, right. Don't you want to know? What, what if someone called are? you a like uh, a short fused? 
or something like that. Is that again a bad example? Uh, they would have malintent if they said right. that. Right. Yeah. No, you, you have a good point there. All right. So I want to say where everybody is. Dick Cavett's still kicking around. He's in his mid 90s now. He's written like 25 books and hosted. Is someone calling me a short fuse? Hmm. Or is that a hypothetical? Hypothetical. Uh, Susan, the. Uh, but I'm trying to think of like the, 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 the analog here. Like what's. What's a derogatory term? And it, and it's tough because you're you're a white guy, so there aren't a lot of terms that would offend you. But for you to not even recognize He's just that, putting up this mantle that girl is not okay to say to a female younger than you. I can't even say female. You, well, I'm just I'm just saying if they if they have a problem with it and you're laughing at it, you know, I, I just think it's an well, unevolved uh, approach. Let me at let it. me try and be the mediator here. Nick, if you uh, called someone at a dinner party, a friend of a friend, and you referred to her as a girl and she said, I'd prefer that you call me a then woman. Then I would. You would. Okay. Yes. There, that resolves it. But him as watching this show, deep down inside, his take is, I, th I think it's you're- It's laughable. Yes. My but, take? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you think I think a lot of social laughable. Uh, constructs are laughable, but I'm in that society, so I'll, I'll play along to not be rude. Yeah. I, my Agreed. only thing is is he, you've never been a woman, so if they're going through that and they, they have a different life- just speaks through him sometimes. It's, it's crazy. You can hear I, it. He lived with three women for like, like the last Dylan, year. Dylan, I think Nick's the, point is you're so, he's not going to so offend somebody. unbelievably- so under, crazy. Nick doesn't. What he's saying is he doesn't understand why someone would be offended by it because he wouldn't be offended if someone called him, "Hey, boy." See, he's right. been repeatedly asked to not say the R word, right? But he does to those people that asked it. So I, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get, better. but there's no other word I can use for your behavior right now. But I am trying to. Hey, this get is a comedy better. podcast, right? No, no, no. I know it is a comedy podcast, but what I'm trying to say is. You are you're a white guy, so there are no real words that could ever like trigger you or make you upset or remind you of your station in life, which is beneath others. Right? Last night, his wife called him a a, a white privileged man, and he scoffed at it to hmm. her face. Well, I'm glad I wasn't at that dinner. It seems like it got intense. Are you? But but do you do you hear what I'm saying? Say it again. Oh, you didn't. You weren't listening. I turned off after you called. You said the exact same thing that your wife said to you, said to you. No, what do you mean? Because I wanted to tell the point that we just heard it last night and you scoffed at it. You said, I'm a white privileged man, so I don't understand. I, I'm saying you're a white man, mm -hmm. so there are a few derogatory terms in your existence that could make you feel belittled or remind you that you are at a lesser station in life. But that's that's because of how I choose to act on them. People could call me a white trash honky from wisconsin uh, uh a hick a redneck and like say it in a really demeaning fashion right it wouldn't affect me right i choose not to let it affect me right but you you can't put yourself in their position in any way shape or form. i would it's choose not to let uh, being called a girl affect them but i you're right i can't say for certain because i have not been a woman right so my whole thing is your uh belittling of someone else's opinion uh you your wife speaks through you laughing at people is a sign of someone severely cognitively you guys underdeveloped. Both, we all do it to each other dylan i'm just i'm just trying to tell you that that's not true we're all See, we're uh, all uh, assholes sometimes yeah and nick was just a huge asshole but that's fine this these are tough discussions hey i think the audience wants to know what these two women are up to yeah now. let's check it out all right well hold these on arrested Raging, development. Raging. susan susan miller uh the uh, uh dark-haired lady uh she's 86 and she uh wrote a pretty popular book called against our will men women and rape <laughs> uh i f forgive me i forget the other woman's name on the dais I think it also begins with an S. All right. Uh, anyway, she's yeah. 78 Sally. Now. Sally. Sally. Uh, she's a uh, spiritual guru, and she's also got a very popular book called Doorways to the Infinite. It's both still kicking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are two great Half titles. Dead. There is regret in my heart for laughing at the title of the first one, but it just like, if you would have had three guesses at what her title of her book would have been called, it would have been that. Um, right. So Can Hugh I Hefner at this time has... Uh, Coerced multiple women into his his bed for his his magazine and guys. He admitted that he'd uh, also engaged in well, sex with men. You know, good for him. Yeah, it was the seventies. Now, one thing about Hef, which I think kind of made him a Teflon Don, was he um had uh, I want to say it was Martin Luther King write articles in Playboy and in, in its various early incarnations. He was a big supporter of the civil rights movement, right. and so he was kind of ahead of his time with that. Right. So. Kind of people are complicated. Very. I think that was the point I was trying to make. Thank yeah. you. All right. So let's go. But to men are always pigs. Yeah. No matter what. 
Yeah, I'm, I've, I've been a pig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, uh, clip is uh, eight minutes and 39 seconds. This is where they really start getting into it. And I want the audience to note how respectful the debate is. I, I think yeah. uh, the, the women from the women's uh, foundational movement or whatever the hell that's called, they get a little <laughs> angry. But for the most part, you're hearing both sides, ideas and thoughts. And it's just refreshing, All even right, though it was 50 years ago. Hold on. We just heard the on this day program. I want to say, I haven't finished. The day that you are willing to come out here with a cotton tail attached to your rear end. (laughs) Pretty sick burn. He has made the degradation of women a condition of employment in the Playboy clubs around the country. They have to get into these ridiculous costumes which deny their humanity and their femininity, you, you make them it. look like animals. Yes, women aren't bunnies, they're not rabbits, they're oh. human beings. All right. The playboy symbol, the rabbit, of course, and the reason for having bunnies in the clubs, the symbol was originally a male figure, and it was picked quite innocently and simply some 16 years ago because we felt it was a rather playful and sexual symbol. The fact that the girls are dressed in costumes is no more complex than that, and the girls obviously don't find it degrading. Uh, or we wouldn't have as many working with us. Uh, that's, in addition, that's not true. just one minute. In addition, I know that there are. I know that there are a great many women who feel as you do. Uh, but there are also one out of every four readers of the magazine today is is female. So there are obviously a lot of other women too. In terms of degrading and wearing a, a bunny tail, the parallel that's usually made is you know why don't you create a um, you know a women's magazine with nude men because there's some kind of a notion that you know taking the clothes off is a degrading concept hey helen Gurley brown wants to put a man yes, I know in, you, in I know cosmopolitan you, uh, you, you can stop here uh, the last clip is at 15 minutes and 50 seconds cavett asks uh both of the women if he's an oppressor 15 minutes and what 15 minutes and 50 seconds he's here um <laughs> I wish we could get to them. That isn't aimed at any of my guests. Uh, this turned into a roast Hefner evening. I'm sorry about that. Dick, I'm gonna uh, <laughs> talk about that later. <laughs> oh, so I guess that's it. Sorry, I probably had the time code. Time seemed a little, a little sorry. close <laughs> to the end there. Sorry. Anyway, I find that fascinating. They're old clips. They're fun to watch. And it kind of tells you, like, as much as we think uh, with, you know, protests and things, the issues that we have today, Really, not a lot has changed. I mean, people were still having these open discussions 50 years ago about sure. things. Sure. It's, it's almost like like carbon copy arguments that we're having. Slow moving, this cultural progression. Mm-hmm. Slow moving. Nevertheless, very fun. So uh, if you ever, if you can't stand late night television, go back and uh, just put in Dick Cavett show. Yeah. Got a lot of fun stuff on there and a lot of famous people that you've heard of and you know, having good conversations. That Graham Norton, that little sprite. You ever heard of him? Yeah. He's a lovely Is that the lady. English guy? Yeah, they're over they're over across the pond. And also he does something fun. I think he lets his guests drink. And yeah. then also he invites three people on what would be kind of considered a panel. Yeah. And they just shoot the shit. They shoot the shit. It's fun. Yeah. Better than Fallon. All Damn right, sir. so that's it for us tonight. Um, guys, remember, patreon.com slash another podcast network. Um, always be respectful when you're talking to your friends about cultural issues. I think that we reminded everyone of that this evening. Jump in the iTunes ratings and reviews. Hit five stars and kind words. Until then, I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Nick, say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat, say goodbye. Later. Later.